Actually, the Holy Ghost wrote that song. Amen. Powerful, powerful song. Um, I trust everybody's had a good week. Ready for church. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, over the last <clears throat> couple of years, the Lord has spoken prophetically that he was going to begin to reach into Hollywood and take some of their biggest voices and save them. And um, I was with Steve and Terry. We were having lunch, and he showed this to me. But uh, Jim Carrey just got saved. Just <clears throat> I watched his testimony online talking about the blood of Jesus and the grace of Jesus and the mercy of Jesus and how he had had problems and God's turning his life around. We have no idea of what, we're, what we are stepping over into. How many can sense that God has got his hand on you? Hallelujah. That he's orchestrated. And, and you didn't know it when God told you to move here, that he was positioning you for something that was powerful in the kingdom of the Lord. <clears throat> and so today, I, uh, God really just put this in my spirit. I, years ago, I, I actually preached on this subject, but it's God has refreshed it in me. And I'm going to begin to read out of the book of Joel. Um, chapter 2 and <clears throat> verse 15. You know, Jesus is in the house. And uh, I know we stand a lot, but if there's anybody you need to stand for, it's Jesus today. I want you to stand for the reading of the word. We don't, we forget, but there are nations that don't get to have this. This book is outlawed. And here we, today, we get to stand in peace in the presence of God. Verse 15, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and them that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. That means something, there's a uniting getting ready to take place. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy heritage to reproach, that the heathens should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the land be jealous, or the Lord be jealous for his land, and he will pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I'm going to send you the corn, the wine, the oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. I will drive him into a land that's barren, desolate, with his face towards the east sea and his hinder part towards the utmost sea. His stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. <clears throat> God bless you. You can be seated. We are rapidly ending the end of this age. And it is going to be a militant church that's going to win strategic battles for the Lord. This church will never be accused of casualness. This church will be bloody with the blood of the enemy on her garments of war. Hallelujah. And this church will walk out in triumphant. God himself is looking down on the earth to see if there are any who understand the times like the men of Issachar did in which we are in. And we will seek his face to intervene into the affairs 
affairs of man. This is not a God-only show, but God is looking for men and women that will join in the vision and will look down and get a hold of God's vision and burden for a lost world. For God is not standing detached and unfeeling from this generation, but the heart of God bleeds today for the cry of the lost, the wounded and the bruised, that there would be a people that would stand up and say, oh Lord, send us. God is looking down in this hour for weepers and warriors, intercessors, battle veterans. That is going to be the bottom line of redemption. God told the prophet Jeremiah that he would spare the city for just one soul. He told Abraham, I will spare Sodom and Gomorrah, those wicked cities whose stenches come up into my nostrils for a handful of righteous men and women. Don't tell me that righteousness is outdated for righteousness is that which moves the heart of God. It is the currency of glory and it is the salvation of the church. You and I can no longer treat casually that which is important to God. If Christ would declare, I am anointed for the bruised, the broken, the poor, the captive, and the blind, is that not yet the mandate that God would put on the church in this hour? The Lord told Isaiah, I have set watchmen on the walls of Zion, the church, intercessors and warriors who will not hold their peace and who will give me no rest day nor night until I become the praise of men in the earth. What I am doing in this hour is changing the DNA of my body, says the Lord. This is more than scholarly content or delivering sermons with great perfection or wielding great swords or theology or men with charisma who only move the emotions of the crowd. No, this is men and women that know how to weep and then charge the gates of hell with great faith and the redemptive power of the Holy Ghost that will change this generation. God this hour is not looking for fair-haired men and women who only want to come when it's convenient, but he's looking for a glorious church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish who will stand in the gap and get a hold of the cross with one hand and the unsaved with the other and pull them together until the blood sanctifies them and sets them free by the power of the Lord. This great message of redemption that you and I have will only be intellectual and academic until it has the blood gut-wrenching prayers and tears and the power and the demonstration of the Spirit. No longer will we only have a form of the gospel but deny the power thereof. Those who love the gospel, but few very seldom share it. I would take an interlude at this moment to tell you that dog called me the other day, and he said, Pastor Kent, you said people would get up in restaurants and pray the Holy Ghost to move. He said, I got up in a restaurant, said, hi, I'm Dog the Bounty Hunter, and I want to pray over you. He said, I stood up, and he said, they all stood up. He said, I begin to pray over their food and ask God to give them a great day. He said, when I got done praying, they all began to clap their hands, and the atmosphere was changed. That is the power of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
If the Apostle Paul could say, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. We need a generation of men and women who are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ or to declare hallelujah that we stand for the righteousness and the power of the Holy Ghost. For the gospel is more than a doctrine. It is a divine revelation of Jesus Christ, the first and the last. It is the mystery of the age is revealed to the church and given to the world. You will never lock eyes with another human being that Jesus Christ does not love. He crossed the stormy sea to set one demon-possessed man free. He went out of his way to Samaria to minister to one prostitute till we have that kind of all-consuming passion. The world will continue to slip into hell when our convenience trumps the need of the loss. We have then become tinkling cymbal, sounding brass. When the church lost her passion for the loss, prayer meetings died. Revival services disappeared. Fasting stopped. Our preachers lost their anointing and became motivational speakers. And now we are paying the price with the souls of this generation who do not even know who they are genetically. In a time when the church influenced the nation, God was defined by individuals receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Demons were cast out in the sanctuary of the Most High, and there was great hunger for the presence of the Lord. It didn't matter what we look like, sound like, but there was an apostolic thread of heaven that began to weave through the garments of praise until we were robbed with the glory of God. And the world said, give us some of that. Today, a successful church is defined by the size of the congregation and the price of the building. But in spite of what it may look like in the natural, the word of God still declares there will be a glorious and powerful church in the last days. Never has any generation had more possibilities to advance the kingdom of God. For you and I, there are no boundaries today that the church does not have in the God-given authority to cross over. The gates of hell are powerless to stop you and I and the advancement of the kingdom of God. With evil controlling politics, the media, social, electronics, the gates of hell still cannot prevail against our family our peace, our health, as long as the authority of the Holy Ghost rules in our lives. When I look at you today, I cannot bow down to the theory that America is done with God. I cannot accept the declaration that nobody wants Pentecost anymore. But today, hallelujah, I look at an apostolic, blood-bought, Holy Ghost, uh, ward-washed church uh, that has told God, uh, doesn't matter what it costs, uh, how much we got to give. Uh, as for me and my house, uh, we will serve the Lord. Uh, can I tell you, there is a beckoning response from heaven to 
you today that God said, I'm on my way. I am on my way. I am on my way. The bridegroom has come out of the house of the Lord, and the bride has come out of the closet, and there is a uniting of the glorious uniting of the bride of Christ. We are pregnant with the purpose and the anointing of the Lord. It may look at times like the devil has won. We may experience some temporary setbacks. But when the final paragraph has been written about the church and the last days, it will declare simply, and Jesus Christ prevailed. Never has the church had more talent, money, internet exposure, information, ability, and education than she has right now. And yet all of that is worthless unless the anointing of God is upon it and righteousness runs through the veins of the body of Christ until we fully realize that the only answer for this lost and dying generation is not voting booths, it's not social media, but it is Jesus Christ and him crucified. We are going to continue to fail. It does not matter how many people sit in our buildings in this realm. It matters how many souls do we pull out of the fires of hell and cause them to walk into the glorious presence of the almighty God. Can I tell you that I sense in my spirit that there is inherent in so many of you right now that there has been something that has been dormant and the Holy Ghost says I'm breathing on you right now that there are some gifts in you that had you had when you were children that your enemy suppressed, your parents said no, you got waylaid and sidetracked by sin but God said I am reviving and redeeming the the gifts and the anointing of God that is upon you and out of your belly it's going to begin to flow rivers of living water and you are going to rise up in victory by the power of the Lord. Men today think addiction to opioids Confusion of sexual identity, mass shootings, mental health issues, depression is our enemy. But in reality, they are only the symptoms of a nation who has lost her way and forsaken her God. Today, hell has unleashed every demon against mankind. And the only answer to that dilemma is not counseling, but a praying church. Only the power of Jesus Christ coursing through your veins of a praying church will change a nation and restore her hope. And I have good news. This nation is in the middle of change. So I was sitting on that front row. The Lord began to speak to me. He said, I am now taking you as a church into new territories that you've never been. We are not going in circles. We're not in the wilderness. But as soon as God said, we are now standing in Canaan land, that means we are standing in land that the enemy is violating. But in the court of heaven, that land is deeded to the church and not the Philistines. 
So even though the Philistines looked at them as intruders, God looked at the Philistines and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Pezzarites and the Jebusites as intruders. And the Lord said, I'm going to go before you and drive out your enemies. It does not matter. We for a moment thought we were going to change the world by a voting booth or a man. But God said, this is so much bigger than the natural realm. Lord said that there is harvest coming up. But he said, the reason I brought a Joshua and a Caleb into this land is because they were seed from another time when the promise was given. They were the seed of the promise. So the Lord said, I brought Joshua and Caleb into the land of Canaan, and I have planted Caleb at Hebron, which meant, hallelujah, fellowship with God. And I've stuck Joshua to lead my people into their inheritance. I'm declaring to you by the Holy Ghost that God kept some old ones like me alive for this hour to declare to this young generation great is the Lord and greatly to be praised that you're going to get back everything the enemy stole the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar and the locust God said I'm going to make hell give it back to you seven times with interest The early church changed their world and prevailed simply because they cared more for Christ than comfort. Had all things in common, daily broke bread and pursued God, and were not only willing to die for the gospel, did. The men and women who created the New Testament through faith were weepers and warriors for the kingdom of God. It was intercessory warriors whose very shadow healed people, raised a 12-year-old girl from the dead, cast out demons. These are not historical Christians but they're weepers and warriors who were making history, exposing the counterfeit church and turning the world upside down. There is a civil war right now in the earth, not between good and evil, but within the church, between the lukewarm and the apostolic that is hungry for the glory of God. The greatest enemy that the church will ever encounter is not demons in the outside world, but it is from within the religious ranks of the Jezebel-led men and women who want to control the Spirit of God and the Word of God that fleece the sheep, that preach for filthy lucre, and yet do not lead the life of righteousness in their own house. If our only badge of success is remembering what our previous generations have accomplished, then we've already lost our power and our purpose. If our post, our past, is greater than our our future then we've already lost I thank God for this book hallelujah I thank God for JT or John GT Whitford and Marcus and, and all of these other great men for all of the word that they preach but can I tell you we must exceed them didn't I not say say it the Lord except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees there is a clarion call to you today and God saying, come up higher, come up higher. Do I have some men and women in this building that will tell God, I will weep and I will war until I see the tides of hell turn back and the apostolic glory of the Lord released upon the church of the Most High. When the church has the world's respect, money, success, and praise, she won't have their souls. When we love the praises of men more than the praises of God, we lose our power. 
If the church can function successfully without prayer, fasting, and the presence of the Lord, she is then only a successful business with a religious flavor. It isn't technique or systems that will enable the church to win the loss, but as weepers, intercessors, warriors. And if the formula isn't in the Bible, there isn't one. This is not outdated. It's not out of step. This book will mesmerize a five-year-old child with the story of David and the giant. And yet will make a CEO weep in his office as he sees the beauty of Christ in the pages of the book. It will cause a literary genius to declare that the book of Genesis is the greatest literary book ever written. It will cause scientists to declare that Contrary to what we have been taught, we have found that the greatest conclusion and the backing up of science is in this book. Hallelujah. No wonder if they burned it, buried it, and outlawed it. But it's still the number one selling book in the history of mankind. Why? Because you can't kill blood. And from the book of Genesis to the book and the last chapter of Revelation, there is a beautiful river of the blood that will never, never, never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountains and it flows to the lowest valleys. What is it? This is not just pages. It's not parchment, but it is the very incarnate Word of God that declares the Word of God liveth and abideth forever. Heaven shall pass away, but the Word of God cannot be bound. No wonder hell hates it. It's outlawed in our schools. But while it's outlawed in the natural realm, every demon still has known what it says. They can memorize it from cover to cover and knows that greater is he that is in me and you than he that is in the world. No wonder the Catholic Church didn't want their parishioners uh, to read the Bible. No wonder they tried to kill Wycliffe uh, when he translated it. Uh, because hell knew uh, if I ever get me an army of men uh, that know how to read the Bible, uh, I am in trouble. Uh, well, today I got news for them uh, at Regeneration Nashville. Hallelujah. We got a hold uh, of the Word of God uh, that declares uh, we are winners in the kingdom of the Lord. Two prerequisites for ministry are vision and power, but both are only sustained by prayer. Give me an uneducated man that finishes sixth grade with anointing over any man who has a PhD but has never met Jesus, his Savior, face to face. There isn't any other activity that God is committed to like prayer. It is the greatest force in the earth. When warriors pray, hell weeps. Hallelujah. When Christians pray, demons are tormented. When a church prays, the DNA of our city changes. Hallelujah. When mom and dads turn off the television and seek the face of God, God turns off the powers of darkness and brings children into the kingdom of the Lord. May God change our hearts 
that we will care more about Nineveh and the thousands in it that are going to hell than a temporary vine that died more for souls than our ego, our talent, and personal ambition. God wants you to be successful. God wants you to be blessed. But can I tell you, the personal blessings that you and I ex are enjoy today are only temporary because when we cross over into that next great world to come, we won't take anything with us. Man was born into sin and shaped in iniquity, and we are only changed by the redemptive power of the Lord. The only formula that we're restore power back to the church and bring revival to our nation, the United States of America, is prayer out of the mouth of weepers and warriors who fight and don't stand on the sidelines. It is men and women like this church that will show up on a Saturday morning, 250 strong, and walk the aisles and declare, we don't give in, we don't surrender, we are on attack. We're coming after you. We bind you the name of Jesus. And when I get a hold of people like that, says the Lord, heaven begins to open and the glory, the glory, the glory of God is beginning to be released upon the people of the Lord. There will never be any joy in the morning if there's no weeping in the night. There will never be a full barn till the bag of seed is empty. We will never experience the joys of bringing our sheaves into the barn till we know how to sow in tears of intercessory prayer. God will never heal our land till the church learns how to pray. This church is not going to be, is the bride of Christ in battle fatigues, scarred, bloody, but full of power. And we're just getting warmed up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I say like Jeremiah, I feel a fire. Shut up within my bones. What does it look like, Pastor Ken? I don't know, but I can see it off in the distance. It kind of looks like a man, the cloud of the size of a man's hand. What is that? I don't know, but the winds are blowing, and I hear something in the spirit. You better get off of the mountain because there's a flood coming of the prophetic word of the Lord being fulfilled in this hour. There is going to be terror hit the White House, saith the Lord. There's going to be terror hit the kingdoms of darkness uh, and everything that lives and breathes uh, still belongs to me uh, saith God it's just come my spirit the Lord said when I look at the White House I see the same thing I saw in my day white and sepulchers full of dead men's bones This church is not an entertainment center, a social club, a connect group, a counseling center, but we are a living, breathing army marching through the earth, marching through Tennessee, and we are pulling down the strongholds of Satan. Where are the men who will fight till their hand cleaves to the sword. Attack a giant with a stone and walk into a furnace of fire. Raise a knife on their own greatest dreams. Walk on water, die before they'll betray the name of Jesus and pray all night because they can't quit hearing the cry of the lost. Are there some weepers and some warriors in this house. I hear God saying, turn a room into a prayer room. 
turn a trail into a prayer place. The Lord said, not just in this house. One time a month on Saturdays is not enough. God said, I need some weepers and some warriors that will find their own place when nobody knows they're praying. Hallelujah. And they'll get down beside their bed, get in the garage, walk that trail behind the house, and begin to cry out unto God. Lord, I need to be about my business, but God, I'm putting it in your hands because I'm going to be about your business today. God, I intercede over our nation. Though we deserve to go to hell, I'm asking you, God, I'm interceding. If you will spare our nation for the righteous that are in it, Oh, God, let the glory of the Lord come back. Baptize my children. Baptize my family with the power of God until tears begin to come down our face and our gut begins to get sore. And what we don't know, our 16-year-old in the other room watching something on the Internet begins to hear the cry of his daddy, begins to feel the glory of God that begins to come down into that place, shuts it off, walks in and says, Daddy, will you pray for me? How does that happen? It's when a man turns into a warrior and a weeper in the glory of God. We are never going to take this city. We're never going to topple Jezebel until God raises up some men and women that will stand in the gap and declare, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Stand with me. Hallelujah. God has amped it up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me say, I feel an unction to say this to my staff. God has placed you here for such a time as this. But never lose sight, first and foremost. Stay strong to God. Keep your prayer line going. This ain't a place to build a personal advancement or a personal career. This is a place that God says, I've given you the honor to stand in the gap and fill the gap in the hedge and be strong in the Holy Ghost. Can I say to this church, guard your house, guard your gates, guard your doors, become warriors and weepers of the Holy Ghost and declare, no, 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 you cannot cross the line. I don't need prayer partners today. What I need is warriors that will begin to hit this altar. Hallelujah. And begin to declare to God, come on. This is my altar call. If you can say yes to the call of God, you will never be more content, more fulfilled, more happy. Hallelujah. Than when you step over into another dimension by the power of the Lord. And as God begins to move. It's the one talent that is going to change the world. Hallelujah. Do you hear Zion calling you to a higher place of praise? Oh, God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Lord, spare our nation. God, spare the United States of America with 